Hello, I'm Jana, and welcome back to the Crafty Corner. This week over at the Funky Junkie Inspiration Avenue blog, we are creating to the theme of Let's Get Ready to Travel. So today I'm going to be creating a travel journal featuring the colorized die set road trip. If you would like to see exactly which materials I'm going to be using, go ahead and pause here. All right, let's head over to the crafty corner. Today we are creating a travel journal. Since our theme is travel this week over at the Funky Junkie Inspiration Avenue. So to get started, I have already pre-cut some chipboard pieces to become the base of our journal. We have two cover pieces that are measuring at five and a half inches by eight and a half inches. We've got two of those. Then this piece is going to be highlighting our main focal point, and this is die cut at four and a quarter by seven and a half inches. And from the center, I die cut an oval. And I will note that this is a thinner chipboard. This one I wanna say is maybe three millimeters, and this one is maybe a millimeter and a half. And then I have another thick piece of chipboard, and this is going to become the spine. This one is measuring at one and one eighth by 8.5 inches. So the first thing that we're going to do is alter these pieces. I'm going to be painting these with distress paint. And the distress paint that I want to use today is Uncharted Mariner. That is going to be a lovely color for this book. So. I'm just gonna take this, we're gonna give it a good shake, and we're also going to bring in one of the Distress Collage brushes, and this is gonna make it super easy to apply the paint. And we're just gonna put some of the paint off to the side here. And we're just going to brush this on. Now I'm going to attempt one of the Tim Holtz techniques, the eroded metallic. I think that would give the journal a really cool distressed look. So we're just going to paint on our base coat first, and then we will see about trying to distress it as well. Uh, since we're working on the media mat, it's going to be super easy cleanup. We're just going to get our paint on, and then I'm going to quickly go in with a wet cloth and scoop up all this extra paint that is now sitting on the media mat. Okay, pretty good. I think we only need the one coat but I just wanna make sure that everything is well covered. Okay, pretty good. I like this so far. I am absolutely loving the color on this. That is definitely gonna be a good one for what I'm going for. All right, I'm just going to take that and we're going to quickly wipe up the mess here. And then I will put things on fast forward as we paint the other cover pieces. Then we'll come back and take a look at the technique to give this a more distressed look. Now that all of our pieces are painted, we're going to attempt the eroded technique, except I'm not going to be doing a metallic. We're going to be trying to get that distressed look using prize ribbon. I'm not sure this is going to work too well, but I'm hoping that using the water drips is going to give us that opportunity to lift some of the paint off. All right, we're gonna do the first one in real time, and then I will put the other two pieces on fast forward. And we're going to be using the cutout piece first. So I've got some prize ribbon. I'm going to give that a good shake. Put that off to the side. I want to make sure I've got plenty of that. So I don't need to open the jar again. And I'm going to be using the larger Distress Collage brush. Because I'm going to want to apply this very quickly. And then add the water. I've also got some paper towel off to the side. That I will use to dab up the water spots. All right, let's give this a shot. So first, just getting the paint onto the brush and now I'm just going to very, very quickly paint this on. It's very important that the paint remain wet long enough for me to get the water drops down and attempt to do the lift. Okay, we've got the paint. Now for the water droplets. So I want fairly big splotches 
So I'm slow squeezing on the trigger of the distress mister. All right, now we're taking the heat tool and I'll try to mute this down for sound and we're going to quickly dry this off. All right, that should be good. Now we're going in with the paper towel and dabbing this off. We're gonna see what this does. I'm hoping we're getting a really cool distressed look, but you know what, even if we don't, I can still try something else to make the cover look cool. All right, and lift. Okay. Yeah, I think it, kind of, I think it worked. All right, let's just dab off a little bit more, make sure that everything is lifted. All right, not bad. We can definitely see the Uncharted Mariner underneath. That is just what I was going for. Okay, let's take a closer look. Yep, you can definitely see where the Uncharted Mariner is coming through and you can see where the prize ribbon is over the top. That is very much starting to look like a worn book cover. Very cool. All right, just gonna do a quick clean up here. Then we will go on to the next step. I've got some ground espresso off to the side and I'm going to be putting that over the top to age the cover a little bit more. All right, just need an ink dabber. Here we go. I've got this. That looks good. All right, we'll be back in just a moment. I want to just finish drawing this off and then we will add some distress ink. Okay, let's go ahead and add some of the ground espresso distress ink. I'm just going to ink up this blending foam and we're just going to go right over the top. This is gonna darken things up quite a bit, but again, I'm going to dab some of this off after we spritz with some water. Yep, this is going to look really cool, very vintage. I'm very happy with this. Okay, so we've got that all nicely grunged. Now to go in with the water again. So we're just going to let the drip drops fall where they will. Ooh, that's good. All right, and now I'm gonna give that a lift. Just dabbing that off. And that, oh my word. This is definitely one of my favorite Tim Holtz techniques ever. It looks cool when you're doing this with the metallic and it also looks cool with regular paint to paint. You still get that awesome vintagey look. This is, that is just too cool. All right, I am super, super happy with this. We're gonna set this aside and we're gonna put the rest of this on fast forward as we complete the other covers. One more quick thing before we move on. I do want to dry brush a little bit of gold around the edges of this cover piece just to add a little bit of visual interest. So just going around the corners very quickly, I've got a brush, no water on it, just a bit of tarnished brass paint and we're just adding a little touch of gold all the way around. Just kind of wanna draw attention to the layer and make sure that we're sticking with our fun vintagey vibe. Okay, and I'll do the same for the oval part as well. Just very, very lightly brushing that on. I'm really liking the dry brushed effect. I didn't want like a solid gold, I just wanted little hints of gold. There we go. Pretty good, almost done. And then we can put the rest of this on fast forward. There we go. Just a little bit of added shine. Here are the completed cover pieces. We have our two front covers and we also have our frame. All of these I have edged in a bit of gold with the tarnished brass distress paint. Now we're going to turn our covers over and we're going to be adding the spine. Now for the spine, I'm going to be using some bookbinders tape. 
This is very flexible tape. It's kind of got a fabric-like quality and it is sticky. So we're going to measure this out about three inches longer than the spine because I'm going to want to be able to tuck the extra ends over. So placing the tape down, I'm then going to place the book spine and this is important, the color side should be facing up. And then we will trim this off with our tonic scissors. So once we trim this off, then we will add the front cover and the back cover. All right, so we have that snipped and we'll just set this aside. Now we're going to be attaching the front and back covers. When attaching these, I want to leave approximately an eighth of an inch between the cover of the book and the spine. I'm leaving this gap because I want the book to have flexibility when we close the covers. And having that little hinge using the fabric tape is going to allow for the flexibility. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side, leaving approximately an eighth of an inch between the cover and the spine. Then we're just going to firmly press down. And then I'm going to take the bit of overhang and we're going to tuck that up from the bottom over the edge of the spine and the two covers. Same thing on the top and we'll just press that down. Okay, that is good. Now we're going to alter the color of the book binding tape. To do that, I'm going to be pulling in an alcohol ink marker. I'm going to be using black today for the spine. All right, the spine looks pretty good. I'm very happy with that. Now we're going to want to start to add some of the embellishments. I have these fantastic ideology book corners and I'm going to be adding one of these to each corner of our book covers. So with just a little bit of glue, you could use collage medium, though in this case, I am using some PVC glue. I'm just going to put that over the corner of the book and then with my fingers, I'm going to squeeze the corners down and over the edges. Now to make sure that they stay completely in place, I'm using a pair of pliers to make sure I have these smushed down tight to the cover so that they don't come off. Now we're just going to repeat that same process for all of the corners of the book. Here are the finished corners. I love how these add a vintage vibe to a book, and that's perfect for the travel journal that we're creating today. Now let's turn our attention to the next layer on this book cover. We're going to be creating our focal point next. I have a piece of distressed watercolor cardstock, and I'm going to be tracing the oval of this cutout, which is going to become part of the book cover. Now I want to trace the oval because I'm going to be painting a scene on here. Since our theme is travel, I wanted to paint a picture of Niagara Falls. This is one place I would really like to travel to, and I think that having a travel journal to document that particular trip would be a lot of fun. So now I'm just going to roughly sketch out what the falls might look like. This is just going to be a small template, and then I'm going to go into distress paints and actually paint this. So looking forward to seeing how this turns out. But in the meantime, I'm just drawing in a few lines of where the falls might be, where the rippling water is, and where my skyline is. These are just some basic landmark features that are going to help me when I start painting. Now for painting, we're going to be pulling in a whole bunch of different distress paints. And I think I'm also going to pull in a distress colored pencil for the land. All right, there is our template. Now let's grab our paints. So we have got Mermaid Lagoon and Blueprint Sketch. We also have Prize Ribbon, Tumble Glass, Picket Fence. Now for the Distress Crayon, I'm going to be pulling in Rustic Wilderness. That is gonna be the perfect green to add a small pop of color on an otherwise very blue focal point. All right, so I'm going to be going ahead and putting this part on fast forward as we create our main focal point. And what I'm doing right now is adding just that little dash of green and we're going to activate the Distressed Watercolor Pencil with some water from the Ranger Fine Detailer brush. 
that's just going to brush right on there and we're going to get a nice little watercolor effect with that. All right, smearing that green around, we've got our little bit of landscape. That is good. So I'm just going to arrange my paints off to the side. I'm going to create myself a small palette to work from. And I'll also drip drop a few pieces directly onto the cardstock. Now let's put this on fast forward. Here is our completed focal point. I am so happy with this. I love the way that the Distress Paints blend together and give this really cool effect. I used a mixture of dry brush and wet brush techniques in order to get that waterfall. Now we're going to be attaching our focal point to our frame. I've just put down a little bit of glue which I am smushing around the outside of the oval shape that we have painted. So just smearing that around my, my finger. If you don't want to use a finger, feel free to use a paintbrush instead. And also, instead of painting a whole picture yourself, you could easily cut something out of a magazine or find a picture that you like online and print it out on your printer. There are many options. I just felt like painting today to create this focal point. Now, placing that down, we're going to take the frame and I'm going to carefully line this up so that I get the waterfalls all neatly framed in the oval. And we're just pressing down lightly on the sides. I'm trying to avoid glue ooze, so I'm wiping up the little bits that might have slipped through. And that is good. Now let's just flip this right side up and we'll take a closer look at this finished piece. And there we go. Oh, I am really, really happy with this. This is just the look that I was going for. Now I can see I have a couple of very teeny tiny white spots but that's easy. I'm just going in with a little bit of extra paint and covering those up using the fine detailer water brush. There. And now I am super happy with the end result. The next step is going to be to take this layered piece and attach it to the cover of the book. And to do that, I'm going to be using some PVC glue again and we'll attach it directly to the cover. All right. That's good, flipping this over, and now we need some glue. So I'm just going to smear this around and then I will spread the glue out using my finger again. I find that using fingers is just a quick and easy way to get glue to move where you want it. All right, smushing that around, and I'm gonna try to keep this even and keep most of the glue away from the very edge. I don't want glue ooze when I press this down to the book cover, so I'm definitely applying the glue much lighter around the edges and trying to keep the majority of the thick heavy glue closer to the center of this focal point. Okay, that is looking pretty good. I'm definitely very happy with this. This is going to look so good when all of the pieces finally come together. Now that we have all of our glue, I'm going to do a very quick cleanup. I'm just spritzing some water onto the media mat and I'm just going to wipe this up with a cloth towel. All right. Good, I wanna make sure that I've got a clean work surface for when we bring in the book cover. And there it is. Now we're just gonna take that glued piece and we're going to carefully stick this down. I wanna make sure that everything is neatly lined up so that we're getting this beautiful layered effect. Mm. I can really see how the gold pops out around the edges now. I'm very happy that we dry brushed that on there. All right, couple of quick little adjustments, just making sure everything is nice and even there and I'm just going to press all along that top piece to make sure that everything is going to lie nice and flat yes definitely very happy with the way this is looking okay a couple more presses there that should be good now we're just going to need to let this dry drying time could take anywhere between 10 to 20 minutes again as always with glue it's going to depend on where you are. What's the humidity like? How dry is it? And what's the ambient temperature? All things to keep in mind when trying to estimate drying times. Now, I also wanted to add 
a die from Road Trip. We're going to be die cutting out this car and I thought that'd be a fun addition to add to the cover of this book. So we're just going to go ahead and open this and take out all of the dies that we will need for the car. Now when I'm die cutting these I'm going to be using some of the Ranger watercolor cardstock. I like using the watercolor cardstock because it is so thick and it will be very easy to assemble and it also allows me to apply a whole variety of different mediums without warping the paper. In this case, we will be using some distress paint to add some character to this fun card. All right, so I'm just checking the dies over. This is a colorized one, so I need to check each one since they are all labeled with which part of the die set that each piece goes with. There, now that I have all of the pieces, I'm going to be arranging these onto the watercolor cardstock. And these pieces, I have also added double-sided tape to the back of the cardstock. This is going to make the assembly process so easy once we have die cut everything. Now I'm just going to take all of the pieces and place them onto the cardstock, and then we will take this over to the bag bond for some die cutting. But first, I need to get everything arranged and try to get the best possible configuration so that I don't have to run too many passes on the die cutting machine. All right. So we're just kind of playing around with the cars, trying to figure out where things go, and then we can die cut. Now for one of the layers, I know that it's going to be in black, so I am going to pull in some of the black craft stock for this particular piece. So I'm just going to trim this down with some of the tonic shears, and now we have our final piece. We are ready to die cut and then assemble. Here is our completed car. Oh my word, this looks so cool. I love the layers, I love the color. That's gonna make such an awesome addition to the journal. Now, I did want to add a sentiment as well. An adventure awaits seems the perfect sentiment for a travel journal. I have mounted the sentiment on some of the scrap black cardstock and now we're just gonna trim that down using the mini tonic trimmer. All right, that looks good. Let's go ahead and give that a trim. Excellent. So now I'm just going to turn this into a little banner and we're just going to do a little triangular snip at the end. And that sentiment will be ready to be added to the journal. Okay, very good. And we'll just set the mini trimmer aside. And our extra stickers. And now we pull back in the journal. Here we go. So time to add our finishing touches to this. What we're going to be adding will be our sentiment up near the top, Adventure Awaits, and then we need to add the car down near the bottom. All right, so just pressing that down a little bit to make sure that it sticks, and oh, that is making me super happy. Now, let's turn our attention to the inside of the book. The last thing that I need to do will be to add some end pages. I'm going ahead and adding down some PVC glue and I'm adding some solid color navy blue end pages. Then over the top, we're going to be adding some of the Tim Holtz Ideology worn wallpaper to finish this off. This is just tying together that entire vintage look with the book. There, I am super happy with that. Here is the completed travel journal. I am so happy with the end result. Just check out that cover with our modified eroded metallic technique. That just gives this the perfect vintage vibe. And we'll just flip this over and take a quick look on the back. Absolutely love this grungy vintage look. Thank you so much for joining me here today at the Crafty Corner for the theme get ready to travel. For this travel journal, we have been featuring the Sizzix Everyday Die Set 
road trip. I absolutely love this car. It's got a wonderful vintage vibe and it's so easy to put together and custom colorize it. The other pieces of this travel journal have featured a variety of distress paints. We use the Eroda Metallic technique with an altered twist and then painted a scene of Niagara Falls. I hope that you have enjoyed this little journal trip. If you are interested in finding out how to create a signature for the interior of a journal, I will leave a link down in the description box. I learned the Copic stitching binding technique from a wonderful creator going by the name of Sea Lemon. So I will leave her link in the description box explaining how to create the cool text block. So until next time, Happy crafting.